World View and thank you for joining us. Now, we're still talking about the ongoing xenophobic attacks in South Africa. The diplomatic crisis that has resulted in some African countries threatening to shut down South African businesses as a result of the xenophobic attacks that forced President Jacob Zuma to cancel a state visit to Indonesia. Zuma was scheduled to leave on the 18th of April to attend the Africa-Asia Summit, but called off his trip to oversee South Africa's response to the attacks, which have left six people dead since they erupted in Durban of KwaZulu-Natal two weeks ago. Zuma instead sent his deputy, Cyril Ramaphosa, to attend the summit, a move observers viewed as the right thing to do as the condemnation of government's uneven response grew this week. All this started after a statement by the Zulu king, Zuelitini, calling on foreigners to pack up and leave South Africa. The comment then resulted in sporadic killings of non-South Africans across the country. However, analysts have asked King Zuelitini to qualify the term foreigner, as some have argued that the comment seems to target other black Africans. President Zuma's strong condemnation of the attacks in a speech in Parliament last week seemed to fall on deaf ears as xenophobic clashes continued between foreign nationals and locals in Joburg. In a statement issued by the presidency, Zuma reiterated government's condemnation that there was nothing to justify attacks on foreign nationals. Zimbabwean President Robert Mugabe expressed shock and disgust at attacks on immigrants in the neighboring South Africa and said his government was working to bring back home affected Zimbabwean citizens, of which some have already gone back home. An estimated one million Zimbabweans live in South Africa, having escaped an economic crisis and political violence at home over the last 15 years. The Malawian government has hired buses to repatriate 500 of its nationals. Now, joining me in studio this evening to talk more about it is Mr. Omoreji Ogboro, a practicing attorney and political analyst, and Oscar Mshapaize, a political analyst. Also joining me in studio is um, Abe Ongwatuse, a political analyst here in South Africa. Gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, not on a very happy note, I must say, mm -hmm. unfortunately, because of all these xenophobic attacks. But before we go any further, let's just listen to King Zuelitini's Imbizo speech. <laughs> Well, that was the speech by the Zulu King Zuelitini that has actually been uh, branded by a whole lot of people as the hate speech of the king. Now, the king has been accused of actually insinuating this situation that we're seeing now. But then he gave a statement saying that it was not him who said so. He said people misread and misunderstood what he was trying to say. He wasn't saying that people should be killed and there should be xenophobic attacks. What is your comment on that? Um, in, in, in my own opinion, you know, um, the um, less privileged South Africans have been waiting for every opportunity 
to react to any kind of statement. Not necessarily because the king said so, but it probably no. was just an opportunity that they used. Exactly, because if you look at the service delivery down to the, the grassroots of um, South African, um, less privileged South Africans, mm -hmm. and um, it was just an opportunity to react on that. I'll take you back to 1998. Mm -hmm. In 1998, two Senegalese and a Mozambique was thrown out of a train, a moving train. Mm -hmm. And that was obviously an, a, a, a xenophobic attack. In 2008, a repeated incident as well, too, in 2008, it repeated himself. And about 62 um, people died, which some few South Africans were involved. Well, there was action plan, the government made an arrangement that was during Becky's time too, as well, to see how to deal with this issue. Mm -hmm. And obviously, there was, there's always a plan, but lack of implementation to follow up the displaced foreigners. This is a rooted problem that needs to be addressed from, the, from, 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 from its inception. Because I tell you practically with myself, as a practicing attorney, I, I know what I'm facing mm -hmm. within the structure. Because now we have to look at the professional angle of being a resident in South Africa. You have to look at the middle class, and you have to look at the less privileged, mm -hmm. especially in the rural areas where you have the Zimbabweans, the Malawians, the influx of the foreigners from the SADC region that are yes. occupying that region. Yes. So, you see, a statement by the king was just an opportunity to react. It, it, I've, I've, just like you've played the clip now of Senate, it's taken out of context. We must address the root problem of xenophobia. It's not, it's not even xenophobia, it's Afrophobia. Uh, mm -hmm. Because now, you, the, 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 if you look at xenophobia, xenophobia is it's, it's, it's basically centered around dislike of foreign nationals. You understand? And now, uh, foreign nationals could be Portuguese foreigners, could be Italians, could be Jews in South Africa, mm -hmm. could be Asians. And now it could be anyone as anybody. long as they're not South African. Exactly. Despite color. You know, but yes. now the target, the sole target now, it's the Somalians, the, Zimbab the Zimbabweans, the Malawians. Mm -hmm. Mozambicans. Mozambicans. Then before we get to Nigerians. Mm -hmm. You understand? So in my own opinion, to be very honest with you, and from a legal perspective, it was just an opportunity to, to react. Okay, what, what is your opinion on this? Um, my take on the matter is that the issue is not about uh, xenophobia per se. It's not about South Africans hating foreigners and, uh, and anything that is uh, foreign. The issue has to do with uh, such thing as unemployment, inequality and poverty within the South African society. Because the people are perceiving that the government is not doing much mm -hmm. to alleviate poverty, to reduce unemployment. And the words that the king said, because the people were waiting for something like this, to go up in arms. And he didn't have any right to say those words. Whether he was misunderstood or not, the words that he, he said were ambiguous. They were open to so many interpretations. And as such, people took uh, opportunity because it's, it's not necessarily uh, about um, South Africans, like I said, hating foreigners. Mm -hmm. There is a contestation of, for resources. There are limited resources, especially at the lower end, where, where people are battling for jobs in, in construction, in the domestic uh, work environment. They are battling for jobs with, uh, with the locals. And at, at business level, you find that uh, in the communities, there are those with spas, shops, and, and, and small shops. And you, you find that People from uh, the foreign nations are also setting up shops and offering better deals to the members of the community, such thing as credit and all that, that the fellow South Africans are not doing. So they are feeling threatened because of that, because they are not competitive enough. Does thuggery enough. come into question here? Sorry? Thuggery, does it also come into yes, question? Yes, there are criminal elements, uh, because there, there are some who, who took it as an opportunity 
to loot and to be involved in such um, criminal activities. Mm -hmm. And I, I disagree with, uh, with what he said to say it's not um, a, a myth of xenophobia, it's mm -hmm. about uh, Afrophobia. Mm -hmm. No, we have Pakistanis being, being, being attacked and other non-African nationals being attacked do, who have businesses in those communities who are being attacked. So it's not about someone being an African per se, mm -hmm. but it is someone who is threatening their livelihood in terms of competition for, for jobs, in terms of competition for resources, in terms of clinic and schooling, and also in terms of business opportunities within that, um, that, the, within that uh, bracket of business when you're talking of small shops and all that. Okay. Yeah. Now, Abby, I'll come to you. Mm. President Zuma has been criticized for actually delaying the response of reacting to the xenophobia attacks two weeks down the line after at least seven people have been killed. Only did he then rush to parliament to address this issue. Only then we saw the army going to take back the streets, a reinforcement of the SAPS, the SAPS that has also been criticized of failing to restore order. What is your comment on that? Thank you. In my own point of view, I think it's more of politics than what we think. Because in this situation, for the president of a country to have taken up to two weeks before he can rush down to a parliament, there are so many things under here that we don't know, you know? And the reason why I said that was that, first and foremost, how can a, t a king, as, as a, 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 a very versatile king of, of Sululand, could speak in such a manner and a president of a country could not come out within 24 hours and condemn such? Mm -hmm. And at the same time, the people who are looting, who are causing problems, who are causing mayhems as well, when you look at them, is lack of education. At the same time, jealousness. They are very, it's, it's, it's jealousy. Mm -hmm. Because when you see foreigners who are doing well in your own country and you are not doing well, but the question I expect them to ask is, what are the foreigners doing right and the citizens are not doing right? Mm -hmm. There is no country in the whole world where that they can that, that can sustain economic development without foreigners mm -hmm. even as big as america is it is it is being controlled by foreigners if there are foreigners in america chinese are foreigners in america but yet they are the one who is controlling the economy of of of, uh, of united states of america so i expect the, the the president to look at it from economic point of view you know and stop that attack before it escalated to this point see personally on a daily basis since this issue started, I've been receiving less, not, not less than 50 phone calls from Nigeria. My people asking, can you come back home? And I said, it's not actually up, up to this point you guys think it is. But the kind of news going around the whole world by BBC, by CNN, automatically you should be afraid for your own people. But my advice to South Africans and to the South African government is that an issue like this should be something that should be tackled within a very, very short period. Because at the end of the day, it's not even good for the country, it's not good for the country image, and it's not good for the country economy. That's true. We, we're getting to that part. But now you, you highlighted something which I find uh, quite interesting, that it's rather politically motivated. Yes. You state that a king who holds no office in the government speaks and people react in such a manner that the president of the country only took two weeks to to, to then to respond to it. Would you, would, can we say that perhaps they, they were supporting the king's statement? Can we say that? I'll leave this to anyone to answer. Can we actually say that King's Relitini's statement was supported? In my own point of view, by the president? I think it is. Because if it is not, I expect the president of the country to come out in less than 12 hours and actually compel the king to retract what he said. You know, to, to go to national TV, and announce to the people that this is not what I mean, I'm being misquoted, I'm being this, I'm being that. But in a situation where such is not done, mm -hmm. and the killings are going on. I was watching some, part of the, some news a few hours ago, where they said that Jokowski saw where they were killing certain foreigners. You, you understand my point? So, to me, it's more political, because I think the Arabica economy is a, bit, a little bit going down, and they thought, this is my personal opinion, maybe they thought if they could send away some foreigners, then their resources will be enough for them to look after themselves. But unfortunately, mm -hmm. it's wrong. That's why I said, to my own, from my own point of view, mm -hmm. I saw it of more of political than Politically what my motivated. Uh, motivated. Motivated more than my okay, let me, are saying. Let me hear think, a different view. I let me hear a different view. When it comes to the response of the president, I wouldn't say the 
the response, the, the delay in response, had anything to do with any uh, political agenda of any sort. Uh, remember, no one expected this to go out of hand uh, the way it, uh, it did. And but it's something that we've seen before. In <laughs> yeah, fact, it yes, dates in back to so many years. Yeah, which means, which means, 1998. Which means, no, yes. so which means because the challenge even. with the, with the xenophobia is that people are looking at it. Um, yes, lives are being killed, and it, it's not right. Okay, but there are real issues on the ground that have not been addressed since 2008. And for the president to respond, his response must not only be superficial, where he's only responding to a crisis. He must respond by telling us what he has done in, uh, from 2008 up to till death to address the issues that made the xenophobia to, to, to crop up in the, uh, there. So his response had to be calculated. He had to observe the situation. He had to gather the, he had to gather the intelligence on the on, 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 on the on the gravity of, 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 the, of these xenophobia attacks. You look at South Africa, 49 people are killed on a daily basis with murder. They are, they are murdered on a daily basis, which is about 18,000 lives mm -hmm. yearly mm -hmm. being lost as a result of murder. And these things are not addressed. And here comes the issue of xenophobia. And it was only a few lives that had been killed. I, I, I'm not saying um, one life is not important, mm -hmm. but in terms of the media focus, that is when now they are now f zooming in and other political parties milking on the situation so as to, to, to discredit the current government. And there isn't much, even the words that he had said, that were going to change what they were doing. Because these people were de determined, even after he said it, that's why the, the attack still went ahead. Because this is something that is uh, already coordinated people that were, were these were like your, your delivery, uh, service delivery protest. Mm -hmm. Because it's about service delivery, it's about unemployment, it's about poverty, mm -hmm. it's about creating job opportunities for this. But this is the, uh, these are the real issues. And this, this xenophobia, this is just a symptom of what is, uh, what is something that is deeper. Okay, you, you mm. seem to have a different opinion Yes, there. I have a different opinion because I just to disagree with my, my, my political analyst um, in the fact that it's political. But look, let's, 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 let's have a flashback to 1998, 2008 before now. What was the contingency arrangement that was made to cope the xenophobia attack? Mm. It's just not now. It's been there. It's, 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 it's a rooted problem because... One thing we have to take into cognizance is that we have to look at South Africa and look at the background, where they're, where they're coming from. The apartheid, they've not, they, from, from apartheid straight to 1994, they've not been opportune to be exposed and to accommodate foreigners. We have to be a bit objective here. So what was the government of the day, right from Nelson Mandela to Mbeki, mm -hmm. before Zuma. Before we start pointing fingers on this particular government, we have to go back from 1994. Mm -hmm. What arrangement did they make? How did they start to incorporate and educate the, their people? And that's the, that's the essence of history. When you, when you keep history away from human beings, they tend not to appreciate. Do you know most South Africans don't even know the fact that Countries like Zimbabwe, Zambia, Nigeria contribute, Angola contributed to their liberation. Mm -hmm. They don't know that. Mm -hmm. How it do seems, you get? It seems there's a lack of information. There. That's, that's, that's the problem. They don't, so we should we should we should start from. And one thing we have to take into cognizance is that South Africa is the only country in the continent of Africa that has really absorbed foreigners like any other country. So you, we must, we have to look at the resources as of, you can't compare what you have in 1994, the resources you have in 1994 to, 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 to 2015 of today. Mm -hmm. So like was in my opening statement, I said, it's, a, it's an opportunity from the speech, it, it, from service delivery, poverty like you alluded, and unemployment. So, and I'm telling you, if we're not careful, this will repeat itself again. The government is doing, they've tried. The government has come up with interministerial um, committee to look into this, you understand? The, the, the president coming out now, staying for that long, wouldn't have made any difference. The issue is how do we tackle the root 
of xenophobia. I give you an example. Look at me as a professional practicing here. I studied here. I, I studied. I went to law school. I'm practicing. Do you believe that still yet? Now I'm affected because most of my clients, investors, are making calls. They want to pull out. I'm, 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 it's this affecting is actually me. happening to yes, you. Yes, right now? now, right now, they want to pull out. They're telling me, Mr. Buru, as it stands, please look into one or two, three of my assets and I, I want to pull out. I can't can be with That actually brings me to, to my next question. Mm, okay. Let's talk about how the xenophobia has affected South Africa and even other African countries economically and business wise. We, we've seen that other African countries are retaliating. Mm -hmm. Mozambicans have barricaded their border. They don't want to see any South African uh, oil trucks going in and out. In Nigeria just today, there are reports that the Nigerian youths have gone to attack the MTN headquarters in Lagos. They've mm -hmm. also summoned the ambassador there. Mm -hmm. Zimbabweans, likewise, and Malawians are also, uh, you know, coming up as well against all South Africans. What does this mean for South Africa and its neighbors? No, no, that, that's the effect. You, you, if you see for, or, already internationally, look, let's take practically Nigeria. Look at MTN, for example. A travel ban mm -hmm. also, sorry. A travel yeah. ban has also been issued by okay. several Western countries. So, so mm -hmm. let's look at MTN. One, almost 150 million subscribers. Uh, let's say, if, I, if, if my, my, I stand to be corrected, in Nigeria alone, we could probably be looking at 50 to 60 million subscribers mm -hmm. of MTN generating coming up from Nigeria. So I'm telling you, the shop rights, the other, the other, okay, if, if we even have to go down to Mozambique, Sassel, mm -hmm. the 350 employees of Sassel are already beginning to pull out. So we, you, we, we're, going, we're going down to the business sector. Um, let's come down to even small business like myself, like many of us in South Africa, mm -hmm. that most of our businesses, we, we are uh, we're linked to, to investors outside the country. There's a big effect. But the issue is we must look for a solution. What is the solution? How are we going to cope this problem? Do you, know? do you think that given the way the economy is going and obviously what he has just been saying that people are beginning to pull out their assets out of South Africa trying to protect themselves to invest elsewhere. The economy of South Africa going down, can we say that it will continue in the same pattern in the near future, in the long future? I think it depends on how the government is going to respond. I hear that uh, President Jacob Zuma is sending some various ministers uh, throughout Africa, especially in the Sadat region, to speak to the leaders and uh, really uh, bring back the confidence that has been lost in South Africa and all that. Because the, the other challenge is that South Africa is losing critical skills. Because if you look at most of the, some of the foreigners, because people have got a tendency to think that foreigners are all illegal, for, uh, people that are come Ill, uh, have come illegally into the country, who are just looking for construction jobs and all that. They are professionals, doctors, teachers, who are coming from different uh, nations uh, from, uh, in Africa. If you look at the case of um, that, that happened, um, the Zenfobia attack that happened in Alexandra, where that Enoch Stoll was, uh, guy was killed, when they went to the clinic, the doctor, who happened to be a foreigner, was not there. What will happen to the community of Alexandra? when that foreign doctor decides to he relocate. He also to had to community. relocate to save his the, life. That community. You have got so many educators who are coming from Zimbabwe, from other nations in South Africa. Mm -hmm. What will happen to, to South Africa's education when these people uh, decide to, to relocate to other countries where, where they are welcomed? Mm -hmm. So it's going to depend on how the government is going to respond and restore the confidence of the people. Remember in June, the World Economic Forum and mm -hmm. the African Union Summit is going to be held here in South Africa. Yes. So prior to that, the government has to ensure that that confidence is restored and that South Africa is back to that position so that they can move forward and really look at growing their economy so right. because this thing will definitely affect the economic growth in South Africa because these, kind of, these companies that have invested in other countries, African countries, they will bring income into, into South Africa. And if the business is no longer viable in those nations, they are forced to close down and mm -hmm. that is an income that this economy will lose. Okay, just mm -hmm. quickly, we've, we're only left with about three minutes. What was your comment on this question? Yes, my comment on this issue is we on this table, there is nothing we can do about it. It's still buttressed to the South African government. They are the ones to come up and say, 
You guys don't seem to is. agree with no, you. Agree. Yeah, we, he may not agree with me. You know, we have our own different opinions. This is, I'm saying my own opinion. Mm -hmm. South African government, they are still the one to still go out in any form. The kind of resources to use to convince people from other African country to say, I'm sorry, what is happening here is not supposed to, we are not in support. They are the ones who have such resources. Me and you don't have such resources. They are the ones who can bring up some ministers, some this, that, to go to different African countries to come and speak to their leaders. They are not going to, he's not going to come out from these people who are on this table. So I still believe South African government still have a lot to do because at the end of the day, they are the ones to be at the same end. For example, I have, with the way the situation is going on now, I have two investors who have already called me that they want to sell out their business interests in South Africa. If that should happen, there are some people with the little thing that just happened now, already some people have made up their mind that come this sunshine, they're going to sell up their business out in South Africa. And you can imagine, even if it's just two, three South Africans are working in such business mm -hmm. environment, what do you think will happen, to, will happen to those people already three families have lost? Yeah, yeah, income already. Okay. So, quickly, uh, um, um, just a quick one. Oh, just to disagree with my my colleague here, it's that look, we 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 you you can't leave everything to the government of the day. We we stayed uh, almost. I've been here almost 15, 16 years in South Africa, mm -hmm. and we have to see how we can give back one way or the other to see. It's, it's an engagement. We you need have become a citizen of the country. Naturalized citizen, mm -hmm. which I, I, wanted, I wanted to hold on. Yes, I wanted to touch on the issue of immigration. Mm -hmm. You see, that's why there's, there's a lot of education and we need engagement. Because one, you're saying the government of the day. Why are we here today? Leadership is from, the problem is the entire whole country, uh, continent of Africa. Do we have leader? Is it not just now in the country of like us, Nigeria, that we now have been trying to have a change? Why did we migrate? What is the cost of migration? You have to look into migration in totality. You understand? Migration could be economic migration, it could be political, it could be there are a lot of issues. Mm -hmm. So you can't just say we are leaving everything to the government of South Africa. No, this is a system that we've stayed. This is a system that we've 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 we've, 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 we've sacrificed, we've invested. You understand? And you can because if you think you're running, we're going to leave the problem. We we'll still go and fight the problem, even within our own system or structure. There's mm -hmm. ethnic problem ethnicity problem even from where we come from you understand the Yorubas will have a problem with the houses even within South Africa there's an ethnicity yeah. problem the the, the, the Kosas will have a problem <laughs> will, hold on let me finish the Kosas okay. will have a problem with the penny the penny so I'll look, probably just see, ask for one minute from, from please from, I wish we had from, enough from time from yes so just so, probably so one or two minutes yes, so okay. that we can please right. yes, I yes. think my colleagues misunderstood what I said because why the South African government needs to really go out to change people's mind is that Number one, they are the ones who create policies. Mm -hmm. They are the ones who also say, this is how we want our policies to go. Uh, they, are, uh, they don't know what to do with policy. Can I say okay. something? Yes, please. Okay. I think when we, see it, when we see xenophobia as an African, uh, as a South African problem, we are in the wrong. This is an African problem. Exactly. The reason why there are so many other people from other countries in South Africa is because some of the nations around Afri in Africa have failed. Yes. So this is an African problem. As, in as much <laughs> as it is the South Africans that are perpetrating xenophobia this time, South Africa needs to engage okay. with other African countries and they need uh, to take responsibility for it. we have to close. I yeah. think we need to do another segment mm -hmm. of this particular debate. Uh -huh. I don't think we've exhausted uh, even all the questions that I had today. Okay. <laughs> we haven't spoken about everything. Okay. But, you know, people overseas who read about the xenophobic events probably don't understand what is going on. Like we were saying that it's probably a South African context type of a thing. A report towards tolerance, law and dignity, addressing violence against foreign nationals in South Africa, commissioned by the International Organization for Migration, found that poor service delivery or an influx of foreigners may have played a contributing role, but blamed township politics for the attacks. It also found that community leadership was potentially lucrative for unemployed people and that such leaders organized the attacks. Local leadership could be illegitimate and often violent when emerging from either a political vacuum or fierce competition and such leaders enhanced their authority by reinforcing resentment towards foreigners. Well, that's all we have time for. Join us again next Thursday as we bring you more insight on the world, current and political affairs. I'm Yvonne Katsande. Thank you for watching. Good evening.
the world. With over 6 billion people, 